In this guide, we'll be looking at how to install the Ultralytix YOLO Vision package on a Raspberry Pi with Conda. This package is gonna allow you to run nearly any YOLO Vision that you can find on their site, and we're gonna give you some demo code to get you going. Now, this is not a guide on using YOLO models in your projects, but we do have other guides on that, which you can find linked below. Also, there is AI hardware out there for the Pi, like the AI hat and AI camera. This guide will not work with them either. This guide is for running YOLO on the Pi 5's CPU only. It is slower, but it's easier to use and is fast enough for most projects. If you do wanna use that AI hardware, chances are we have a guide for it linked below as well. One more thing, we've made the installation instructions in this video pretty future-proof, but in case a rogue update, something weird ever breaks this, head on over to the written guide because we have a backup set of instructions that install installs a known to work version. But you should try and follow along with this video first because that version might be a little bit older and updates happen for a reason. They'll let you use the latest model that, you know, with the most refinements and whatnot. To start with, use the Raspberry Pi Imager to install a 64-bit version of Pi OS onto your SD card, which should be 32 gigabytes or larger. Also ensure that you install Bookworm. Once that's finished installing, plug it into your Pi and boot it up. Run through the first time setup as you would however you normally would. There is not really anything special to do in here, just ensure you remember your username as we'll need it for later. Leave it as lowercase pi if you want to make your life a little bit easier. And of course, ensure you connect it to the internet as well. Now that we're in the desktop, we'll open up a new terminal window and start with some good manners by sudo updating and sudo upgrading like so. You can find all the commands for this installation in the written guide linked below if you just want to copy and paste them in. Now usually we'd use something like pip install ultralytics, but recent updates to the package have made it too complex for the pip package manager to install on the Pi. There are just so many packages in it now to install that it can't figure out which versions in order to install them in. If you're lucky and manage to get it going, you might be looking at a good hour or so of installation. This is why we're using Conda, which is a more advanced manager that can deal with these complex complex packages. This is going to actually allow us to install it and it'll be much faster as well. Now pip comes with your Pi by default, Conda does not. So we'll need to install something called Miniforge, which is just going to allow us to use Conda on an ARM based system like the Pi. So we're going to go ahead and download it from GitHub with our wget command. Then we're going to make it a file that we can run with the chmod like so, and then we're just gonna go ahead and run that installer like so. We're gonna to need to go ahead and accept the terms and conditions and you can just keep pressing enter till you get to the end and then press control C and then hit enter and type yes to accept them. And one more enter to confirm, yes, we wanna install it all. Now, very importantly, it's gonna ask if you want Conda to be the default manager. We do not want this, so go ahead and type in no like so, and that's it, we have Conda installed. Once that's finished installing, we'll start by activating Conda. Anytime you wanna use Conda, you'll need to run this command here. Now we're gonna install something called the libmumba package solver. This is essentially gonna beef up Conda and make it think smarter about how it's gonna install our complex packages. A really helpful thing to have. And we can install it with this line here. We're then gonna go ahead and run this command here to tell Conda to use libmumba as the default solver. Before we install anything, we'll need to create a virtual environment, which is just a virtual space that all of our libraries are going to exist in. And we're just gonna be calling this environment ultralytics-env. Once that environment is created, we can get our terminal to work in this environment with the following activate command here. See how in the brackets here, our name of the environment is there. That means that our terminal is working inside of it. If you ever need to come back to this environment at a later date, or say you do something like accidentally close the terminal window, see how we don't have the name in the brackets here anymore. You can get back into it by running the source command to activate Conda, then run the activate environment command to get back into our environment. All right, let's now install our Ultralytics package, which we can do so with this line here. Let's go ahead and run that. And as you can see, Conda is gonna give us some nice installation UI to follow along with. I'm just gonna wait for that to download. Once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and install PyTorch, which is just something that Ultralytics needs to run. And with that, we've installed Ultralytics, but there's one more thing you probably need to add, and that is Pi Camera 2. This is a package that comes with your Pi by default, and it handles all the camera interactions in our code. Now, we can't just install it with Conda, as it's extremely challenging to do so, and usually breaks. So instead, we'll need to use this echo line here to tell our virtual environment to use the default packages that come with our Pi including Pi Camera 2. 
Now you might need to change this line here depending on what username you picked. We picked Pi, so in home slash Pi, we're gonna keep Pi, but change it to whatever your username actually is. Now we've hit a bit of a snag here. NumPy is a foundational package used in nearly everything. And the version that Pi Camera 2 uses is quite a bit older than what Conda installed. And this is gonna give us some conflicting errors. So we're gonna go ahead and run this line here, which is gonna figure out what version of NumPy Pi Camera 2 is using. Ah, I did a bit of an oopsie here. I checked the version of NumPy in our Conda environment, which is the newest version that Conda has installed. We need to check what our Pi camera uses on our default installation. So I'm gonna go ahead here and open up a new terminal. I'm just gonna minimize this one for a sec. And then I'm gonna run that command in our new terminal. See how we're not working out of our virtual environment here? And if I run that, you can see that we're on 1.24.2 instead of 2.3.1. So run this command in a new terminal, not in that virtual environment, and remember that number there because we are gonna be using this line here to install the older version of NumPy. We've got 1.24.2 there. Replace that with whatever number you just got in that previous window. And with that, we have successfully installed the Ultralytics YOLO package, and it's all ready to go, as well as Pi Camera 2. The two things you need to get going with YOLO, Vision on the Pi. There is one more step though before we can run our Python code, and that is that we need to tell Thony to use the virtual environment that we just created. So let's go ahead and open up Thony. And if this is your first time booting the Pi and using Thony, it's gonna be in this simple view. We're gonna to switch to regular mode like so, which we're gonna to need to restart to get into it. And now we're gonna go ahead to run, configure interpreter, and then under Python executable, we're gonna click these dots here, which is gonna let us browse for our own custom Python executable. Go to home, and then under Pi, we're gonna to go to MiniForge 3. We're gonna to go to our virtual environments folder, select the one that we created. Then we're gonna to go to bin, and then we're gonna scroll down and look for a file just called Python. Where are we? And there is our Python executable. Beautiful. See how we've got it selected there now? Hit OK, and now Thony is set up to use all the packages that we just installed. If you head on over to the written guide link below, you'll find this demo code that I'm just gonna paste in. And this just gets a video feed from a camera module plugged into the Pi and runs our YOLO object recognition. Let's go ahead and run that. And as always, the first time you run any sort of YOLO code once you've installed this, there's a few things that it needs to go through and you know, download the model and install any extra things that it needs. That's the beauty of the Ultralytics package. Once it's installed, anything extra it needs, whether you're converting models or using a weird fancy model, it's all gonna handle it for you. Uh, if I point a uh, camera module to the wall, oh, let it sort it out thing. Look at that. If you can see your bounding boxes and all these detections, you've successfully installed it. Now that might seem a bit slow and it is, but if you follow along with all of our guides, we'll show you how to speed up your processing. You convert it to a specific type of model and you get like quadruple, maybe even six times more FPS, just for free, just converting the model. If something went wrong in this process, the first thing I would do is retry everything we did here. It's very easy to miss a step or accidentally punch in the wrong line. And half the issues that people have are from this. Again though, we have a fallback method of installing it that we no works with Bookworm of S. Alrighty, that wraps us up for now. You've now got YOLO installed, ready to go and do whatever tutorial or project you want. If you are looking for some practical guides on how to use YOLO, we have some link below. There's a wickedly cool one using YOLO E, which is one of the craziest vision models out there right now. You can do custom prompt based object detection and all from the Pi. It is, it's insane. The video after this is looking at YOLO E. It's a bit of a continuation from here. Just go and check it out. We also have a maker forum where you can share anything that you make with this, or you can just get a hand with projects and anything we've really covered in this video. We're all makers over there and we're happy to help. Till next time though, happy making.